Hello, welcome to Telecom TV at the OPNFB Summit in Beijing. My name is Tony Chan, and uh, joining me on this panel discussion is S Susan James from Ericsson. Yes. Uh, we have Bala Takeda from Hewlett Packard uh, Enterprise, and Chris Wright from Red Hat. So you guys have been obviously um, involved members of this community. What do you think is the key enablers for communication service providers to actually accelerate their adoption of uh, network functions virtualization? Uh, Susan? Uh, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, obviously, the, the initial deployment and onboarding of applications uh, often takes too much time. So uh, I think OPNFB initiatives around the testing and acceptance testing uh, becomes really important. But one of the things I think that, that we see as, as a, a real challenge is how operators scale this deployment uh, when it's in operation. So it's very easy to, uh, well, it's easier to go in with a small, but how do you actually then grow that onboard more applications and, and really grow the infrastructure? I think that's some of the challenges that we've seen uh, uh, delaying the, the mass deployment of it. And I think that that's something that we're very focused on, on fixing going forward. Bala, you see any key enablers? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I agree with uh, what Susan said. In the end, I think it boils down to risk mitigation. So the, you know, when we embarked on NFV, the, we traded uh, risk versus agility. That's a trade-off of, you know, you could do things faster, you could do things in a much different way. But uh, when it comes to actual deployment, there's the risk of, uh, there's the risk of interoperability, there's the risk of scaling. And then there's the risk of entire, uh, you know, the processes that have to be changed, uh, acceptance testing, verification, procurement, licensing. So all of those things are, you know, we have taken care of some of the technical issues now with interoperability. There are a lot of uh, initiatives on interoperability, especially at the infrastructure level. We have worked on automation and orchestration, trying to, you know, there's still, a lot of uh, options for orchestration, but they're coming together. But I think uh, we see some of the big challenges in how this is procured and deployed and licensed and uh, uh, getting into commercial production. I think uh, some work there would help speed up deployment. Yeah, Chris? I mean, I think we're past the point of just making the basic platform functional. And that was a yeah. big focus. That actually took us quite a long time. And so we should pat ourselves on the back. That'd be really proud because yeah. We couldn't be where we are today if we hadn't really built that, that core functionality. We're building a complex system. And so the initial deployment is that first experience you have with, with bringing this into your network. Uh, and the rest is about operations, interoperability. Uh, and I think that's really the key challenge that we're looking at today. So if you look maybe a year ago an OPNFE summit, we were still talking about how we're making the platform functional. Um, and the initial deployment. Now we're talking about critical interoperability testing because operators want to build their networks out of combined solutions with different vendors involved. That actually requires procurement changes. And one of the things I see is uh, in that procurement cycle, the operator's mindset, the technology side has changed, but the process for bringing in new technologies hasn't really caught up, and that creates some friction. And then you know, a lot of work in creating the orchestration tier to really drive that interoperability and get away from the vertically integrated stacks that are really the, what the operators are most familiar with. So what you guys have described right now is are pretty complex systems with many, many components. So I'm assuming interoperability is going to be an issue. Um, does the OP NFB play a role in this, in facilitating that? I think, uh, from my perspective, I think OPNFV is, is really great at that first uh, round of integration more than interoperability, where we're putting all the components together for the first time. So, of course, it does support with interoperability going forward. But I think where we actually put real products together from an interoperability perspective will be more in the NFV ITI, you know, sort of interoperability testing initiative. Uh, but I still think that it's really important to have done that pre-work before you get to, to NFV ITI. Yeah, I, I think Chris? there's some actual work to do to define how we onboard applications and make what, clear what the interfaces are between orchestration layer, application itself, or the VNF itself, and, and the underlying platform. 
um, it's work we're still doing in the industry. We're, 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 we're aware of the requirements. Uh, we've got some good ideas of how we can build towards creating the right level of infrastructure to support interoperable systems. Uh, but I think there's actual, uh, you know, just basic engineering work to do to get us that next step. Yeah, I think the, the work that we're doing here really, you know, gets that base going. But then if you are talking about applications for network, that's a work that has, that has to happen both within the open source community and then within the vendor community with the, with the CSP. So if you have an application that requires you know, X VNFs and X infrastructure, putting that together in many cases is, uh, you know, happens on a case-by-case -case basis, on a customer pool basis. And the work that we're doing here is actually making that go faster. Yeah. That's the biggest advantage that we're getting out of here. Sounds to me like there's an opportunity for consolidation here uh, of uh, the two organizations. Uh, I think they're doing very different things. I mean, uh, this is very much an open source uh, community where we're feeding requirements back up to open source projects. Uh, when you're talking about interoperability testing, it's, it's commercial products, so it's a slightly different focus, and that's between vendors uh, rather than sort of in a, in a community kind of I environment. So I think there's a role for both, to be honest, uh, and it means that by doing that interoperability testing, you don't necessarily have to do that on, on site in the customer's premise for the first time. So I think this is a nice blend of taking what has worked in, in the telecommunications networks previously, uh, but also marrying it together what, with how the IT networks uh, typically work. So I think it's a, an evolution of both communities, actually. Do you guys have anything to add? Well, I guess the one point that Susan touched on was we are creating a platform in OPNFE. Yeah. And that, so there's integration work that's, that we're doing there that really matters. That platform, uh, independent of commercialization is a place where we can do these early stage yeah. kind of maybe it's not true interoperability testing but it's at least giving us the the first view into how different components will work together I mean it's very much the end-to-end -end functional testing that typically would have, we would have traditionally standardized uh, then gone away right. developed independently then gone back into IOT uh, interoperability testing and done it that way I think what we do now is we, as a community, do our independent development. We come into OPNFV. We actually do the end-to-end -end in OPNFV to make sure that the functionality is actually done in all the, the right places. And in some cases, it's not, and we need to go back to the upstream and fix it there. Uh, but then when we do the commercialization of that product, the interoperability there is actually on the interfaces between the components rather than uh, so much on the end-to-end -end functionality because that we should have already verified it as part of the OPNFV. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's the reason you are seeing a lot of uh, ecosystems develop even outside of OPNFV to commercialize uh, these deployments. So, uh, you know, when the, the procurement itself will move to a completely horizontal model as opposed to a vertical stack, the only way to take a solution to a customer is if you've already verified some level of interoperability. And that means the infrastructure, the, the, you know, the middleware, and then the actual application. And many times that applications are, you know, they are that's where the, the intellectual property is. So you know, they are not inherently open source products. There's one nice thing to, to point out that, that Susan touched on was the standardization is a long, drawn out process. It's important to have clear interfaces and interoperability with open source software development processes and collaborative creation of a common platform, we can sort of sh uh, short circuit some of the standardization process and actually really accelerate what we're trying to achieve here. And I, I come from an open source background, so to me that's a really exciting to see where we can help push the industry a little faster. We can't, you know, we're not going to abandon standards, but we need to understand where de facto standardization can happen through collaboration and common code bases. So I think we're still trying to find a nice balance actually between open source and standardization. I think maybe we, we're not quite there yet in terms of, of uh, where we need to be uh, to get the optimum speed. I think there is still some more work to do there. But for sure, uh, we're in a better position than we were say three or four years ago. 
but I think it's still a learning experience and a journey to, to find really how we get the, the best uh, definitions in place and execution uh, a, and then products out onto the market. So not quite sure we're there yet, but we're certainly a lot closer than we were a couple of years ago. Okay. I'm going to deviate from the questioning just because you're <laughs> leading up to, you've been talking about standards and open source. I mean, there's one standard coming up that everybody's talking about, which is 5G. And it seems to me that it's going to involve a lot of network virtualization. Um, is there a chance that open, sta uh, like, uh, open source kind of initiatives will actually become part of the standard for 5G? Well, I think that they already are. I mean, if you look at, I mean, 5G itself is, is a sort of radio access, but what we're talking about uh, is it's not just about the radio access. What happens to all that data that sits out there in the edge that are being collected by, by the IoT devices? I mean, that's what we're talking about in uh, mostly the transformation that needs to happen on the core network side to deal with the change of, of flow of data through the network. So typically it flows out today, it will actually change to flowing in. So we need to build networks in a much more flexible way. And how we do that is by implementing NFV. Uh, and so it is containing OpenStack, it contains Open Daylight, OVS, ONAP. I mean, uh, you know, it's the whole alphabet soup of open source projects that actually end up yeah. building that infrastructure going forward. So I see it as being very complementary uh, in that journey and, and the transformation that we're making. I think the, you know, all the work that has happened in the f last four years on SDN, NFE, and the work that's happening now on edge computing, they are all laying the foundation for 5G. Yeah. 5G is going to you know, use every single thing that we have done. Nothing of this is going waste. You know, uh, in, in, you know, we look at it as uh, in a three-step way, looking at uh, creating a, a fabric of compute everywhere and creating a, a, a network that matches the distributed compute, so the network is programmable, and like Susan said, all that data that has to be analyzed so that decisions can be made aut autonomously, because you cannot do this manually anymore. You cannot do this manually anymore with uh, every single part moving. So the, I, I think the way, everything that is happening now is influencing even the standardization work that's happening in 3G. So we are pushing the envelope on standardization with what we are doing here. Yeah, I, th I mean, we're a prerequisite, so yeah. there's absolutely standards requ uh, required. So the the radio interfaces, device interoperability, that's that's a level where our open source communities are not going to be as influential. But we're building the key prerequisites. I don't think 5G is realizable without all the infrastructure that we're putting in place today. 